I'm Andy, and welcome to Element 14 Presents. Today, we're going to be building a robot. Now, over the years, the Element 14 community have taken inspiration from film, television, and even animation to make robots that are both technologically sophisticated and really rather cool. But today's project is neither of those. Today's all about a robot that smells. Amazing hacks. Inspired designs. Each week, Element 14 Presents brings you innovative projects using electronics, engineering, and more. The robot I'm building appears on a TV sketch show by British comedy duo David Mitchell and Robert Webb. It only appears on screen for a few moments, but uh, it gained a bit of a cult following at one point. It has some quite distinctive characteristics. Um, a simple outline, a curved tube that's used for sensing the different things that David's character presents to it, a big switch on the side, some flashing LEDs, and of course the audio output, um, which stays things like uh, cheese or petrol. And of course, uh, we're building a small desktop version of Cheezoid. The robot is designed around the Seedwino Zaya board. Um, it's a small board, so it fits nicely into the small size of our robot um, and has some useful features such as a digital to analog converter, which we can use for the audio output uh, uh, drive uh, driven through a amplifier. It does, however, only have a small number of IO pins. So the other components have been selected on their ability to be used via a SBI bus. Um, and that allows us to share several of those IO pins between uh, multiple components. The SBI bus allows a microcontroller to talk to multiple devices using two shared data lines and a shared clock line. To indicate which of the devices the microcontroller wishes to talk to, there's a chip select line which is unique to each device. So, what do we need for this project? Some miniature breadboards, some O-rings, a couple of miniature stepper motors with gearboxes and some stepper motor drivers, a microcontroller brain, in this case a seed Zio board, an audio amplifier, an SD card reader and SD card, a small loudspeaker, a rotary switch, a power distribution board, a lithium polymer battery and one red and one green LED. The models for the 3D printed parts were created using FreeCAD. I like to use the part design workbench and sketches to build my model, but there are many other different ways of building them. I'm going to use a sketch on the vertical plane and I'm going to build a hexagonal spacer. We need to get things uh, quite perfect, um, as you'll see in a minute, because we can add our constraints. So if I make that a horizontal line and if I make this line here, four millimeters long and that uh, sizes our spacer for us. And then I'm going to take a second hexagon, put it in the middle and this time I'm going to rotate it slightly. So I'm going to make these lines vertical, zoom in a bit, get this line vertical and then size this line. So it is, let's go with 2.8 millimeters. It's a good size. So that's our sketch drawn. Once we've got a sketch, we can pad our sketch. You'll see that turns it into a 3D object. I'm going to make my spacers 20 millimeters long. Uh, now, that's a perfectly good spacer, but I'm going to punch a hole through the side so that I can slip my spacers on without taking the robot apart. So I'm going to add another sketch to the object. Again, I'll zoom in a bit. And this time, just a couple of constraints. Can make that bit three millimeters so it's going to give us a three millimeter hole to slide the bolt in through and i'm going to position it minus 1.5 to the left it centers it up we'll close that and then we can make that a pocket and i'll we'll make it go all the way through and then you have it as our design for our spacer the last step is to select the body and export as a SDL file that we can use for 3D printing.
Karen Corbeil, host of The Learning Circuit, a show where we learn about electronic components and concepts, then apply what we learn by building projects. Look for new episodes of The Learning Circuit on Wednesdays and connect with me on the Element 14 community on element14.com forward slash the learning circuit. Happy learning. To test the SD card, I used an example from the Arduino library. Um, one thing when wiring that up is to ensure you've got the right voltage. So uh, my system was a 3.3 volt, so that was fine. Um, and then the other thing to ensure is that you get the chip select uh, pin set to match the software. Um, and that'll ensure that uh, the SBI bus knows that it's talking to the SD card. Second software example was a tone test that uses a digital signal on one of the pins uh, to create a series of tones. And I use that for testing the amplifier. Um, I discovered that there was an able pin on that which uh, needed to be set to low um, and the other thing to do in the software is to uh, change the output pin and you need to do that in a, a couple of places in, in the code. The final bit of software was uh, audio player library for the Arduino Zero um, and that works nicely on the, uh, the Seeds IO. Um, you need to encode your audio file as a WAV file, 8-bit uh, PCM encoding. Um, and then you need to uh, configure the uh, chip select line so that the uh, player can read the, the SD card correctly. So let's see how that works. The internal workings of the robot are built using 3D printed uh, parts. The base houses two stepper motors, uh, those connect to gearboxes and drive the two 3D printed wheels with rubber O-rings for tyres. Then we have a number of platforms. Each of those platforms houses a miniature prototyping board. Um, so we've got one with the, the audio amp and the power, uh, one in the middle with the, uh, the uh, Mac controller, and then down the bottom I've got uh, the stepper motor drivers, although there is actually space on the bottom shelf for the uh, stepper motor drivers too. There's a hole in each of the platforms to allow you to make the uh, cabling neat once you fi finish your sort of prototyping stage um, and I've done a custom uh, print for the uh, loudspeaker uh, as that needs a slightly different uh, shape. The whole thing is connected together using these M3 threaded rods, two nuts on the bottom to hold it uh, in place and then on the top we use a dome nut and those can then sit in a recess in the top of the case um, to hold the, uh, the robot and the, uh, the outer case together. So to detect smells, I'm using a gas sensor, an MICS 5524 on a little breakout board from Adafruit. It can detect carbon monoxide, alcohol, and other volatile gases. Unfortunately, it can't detect cheese, um, but if you do know any uh, sensors that can, uh, drop us a note on the Element 14 community. So for testing purposes today, I'm using some methylated spirits. So we'll give it, uh, give it something to smell. And you can see there's an analog output um, and the voltage increases uh, with the more things it smells. Uh, it's a bit of a sort of lag and it sort of will ramp up. Um, and it should sort of flatten out around 0.7 volts in this particular uh, instance. And I suspect for different uh, concentrations of uh, gas will get higher voltages. And if I take that away again, you'll see it starts to drop back down again. Give cheese oil something to smell. Cheese. 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 So it turns out that my robot is almost as unreliable as the one from the comedy sketch show. Have you ever had trouble with a, a sensor? Or are you building a small robot? Why not let the community know at element14.com. Thank you for watching.